question mark missing from that title, uh, but it is a question uh, more than it is just necessarily a statement. And so when you're, I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about, so when will you be happy? When you're talking to people in general and you're asking this of yourself, when will you be happy? And so take that time to ponder that question. Are, are, you, are you happy when you receive the promotion, maybe that you've been working so hard at it, and you're thinking, man, when I get that promotion, I'm going to finally be happier. Or when I meet that special someone and I get to be married, that's, that's the day I think I really will step into true happiness. And it may be for some of you that, that man, well, God, when you bless me with a house, when I can have my own house, my own yard, that, that's what I'm working for. And that's that place that, that I'm going to be happy because as humans, we're so kind of goal-oriented, even lazy people have goals. There are certain things they're, they're wanting to, to get into, and we're waiting for that to happen. And But this is the, one of the things you figure out, especially when it comes to non-spiritual things, that when you're waiting for one thing, and I could ask you, who has here some, something here that you're waiting on? Uh, Katie, if y'all are on Facebook at all, she's waiting for Christmas. She puts <laughs> something every day. How many days? How many Fridays? How many times for Christmas? Y'all know the Adams Family movie. She was waiting on that. And then when she got to the movie, she didn't really care that much about it. It's funny. But it's the way you are. You're waiting for something. And in my life, before I got saved, and I've told you all this before, but when I got saved, or before I got saved, when I would be at parties and everything that we would be doing, all we're talking about is what we're doing after the party or what we're doing the next weekend or what we're... Every summer, no matter where we were, we were always looking for the next thing because we got there and that was okay, but it wasn't... It didn't satisfy. So the question is, what is it when is it that you're going to be happy? In Psalm 1611, it says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So it says, You'll show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So as a Christian, our happiness comes in our relationship with God. It comes when, and I don't just mean to you when we repent, because a lot of Christians, people that go to church, they repent. And repent, we know it means to change your mind and to turn from. And I, but, but the difference is a lot of people say, oh, I'm doing this bad. I'm doing this wrong. I, I want to ask forgiveness. I want to repent and turn from it. But they turn from it without turning to God, without turning to something. It isn't just enough in life that you repent and say, God, I'm sorry, I don't want to do that more, and you, and you want to turn from it. You need to be turning to something. And so you need to be turning to God. And this is what the scripture is talking about, that when we allow God to direct our steps, and we've been talking about this big God. I'm going to go through everything again with you, but with, you know, he's all knowing, he's all powerful, he's everywhere, he's everything that the enemy is, and he's, his name is so holy. We talked last week about mercy and grace, and and all those uh, different things and, and stuff. But we're talking about this love and this happiness with, with God. Now, how many times have you... I want to try to get this in a good, good, good way of explaining it. I believe a lot of times that people love God. But they, they're not consumed by it. They neglect it. And the best way I can tell you that is think of someone in your life who has passed that you really did love. But once they pass, you realize you didn't spend the time, make the calls, do the visits. You, 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 there's so much more you could have done in interacting with them and enjoying them. And, and it doesn't mean you, don't, you didn't love them. Things got busy. Things got in the way. You, you made other choices. Well, that's the way it is with Christians. Is we, we, we love God, but he's not always the center. And that's where, you know, the, the saying is that actions speak louder than words. And I know y'all have heard that before, but let me just tell you something. Something that speaks louder than actions is desires. Desires speak louder. They speak the loudest of all. You say, well, I don't, I don't see that. Well, listen, an action shows something. And that's why they that's why they say actions speak louder than words because an action shows that you're doing something. You're putting feet to it, you're putting your hands to it. But you know, there are a lot of people who, who get married 
they, they complete the action of getting married. But in just a little while, even though they've done the action of marriage, their desires is for someone else, for something else, for anything else. <laughs> Depends on how bad your marriage is. But there's that desire. And so, and, but you know, you don't share those desires with your, now I, ha, I do not have any desires. I have the best wife ever. I have no other desires than to be with her. I'm just clarifying that right now. But let me just tell you that if I had a desire to be with someone else, I would not share that desire with Vita. Well, why not? Because you did the action of marrying her. That's the, that's the proof in the pudding right there. Which one do you think is going to make a bigger difference here, my action or my desire? The desire is going to speak louder to her. And I'm going to tell you, now I want you to translate that, go over that to your relationship with God. Lord, I gave you my life. I, I, I asked for forgiveness for my sins. Yeah, I saw your actions. But I look in your heart and I see your deepest desires and they speak so much louder to me. See, the pursuit of pleasure, that, that desires, that's what drives us. That drives us to every action, every decision that we make. It what drives us into our relationships, our, our love of football and competitiveness is what makes us want to watch football games and take part in those things. People that want to succeed and they want to be elevated in their profession, it's what drives them. That desire to, to exceed is what drives them to excellence and doing more in their work. You see, we authentically pursue what we are convinced will bring us pleasure, that will bring us desires. Our, our hearts are hungry and our hearts search the, wor the world for something or someone to fill that void. And, and not all desires are good and helpful. Some are pure and some are just, man, they're just twisted sinfully. And sinful desires, they manifest themselves into problems, into struggles, into, into bad actions. And a heart that is bent on, self, on sinful lust and greed and selfishness, I'll tell you what, it will trample over anybody to get what it wants. Now, when we read the Bible, we're going to read in James in just a minute. But let me just tell you something. When people talk about the church. Now, the church in general, there, there's some bad stuff going on. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of, there's a lot of doctrine that's incorrect and all that. There's a lot of problems in, in churches and stuff. And we, got, we got that. But can I tell you something? In the New Testament church, there was problems. When you read the, the letters from Paul and you read the different epistles and to the Corinthians and the, and, and the Thessalonians and to Ephesians and, and Galatians and different ones, those are letters generally that are written there to encourage and there to correct. There are problems in these churches, just like there are today, and Paul in, in these New Testament writings are trying to correct something. So listen, churches, it's, it's okay to understand we've got problems. And what we want is the Word of God to correct and to instruct us. So in James chapter 4, verse 1, Paul's right here. He says, uh, what is causing the quarrels and the fights among you? Don't they come from evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to, get, to, scheme and kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you do ask, you don't get it because your motives are, are, your motives are all wrong. And you only want what will give you pleasure. He's talking about here that everything is self-centered. And the self-centered desires is what leads to problems. Desires of the flesh. That's that desire to win that argument. That desire to, to, to just have food so much that you overeat. Those people that just want to lay around and, and, and indulge in laziness. And those who, who have that desire for you know, sexual things and sexual sins. And those who have greed and things. And they just want to chase after selfish gain. I'm going to tell you the heart chases after a million different desires. But when you look at the gospel of Jesus, it confronts our sinful desires head on. And we're talking about being happy here. And as we get into this, you, you kind of figure this out. Listen to me. Christ did not die on the cross that we could self-improve. He died on the cross that we could be recreated. That we could be made a new creation from the inside out. And that would include the desires and our motivations. Last week we talked about grace and we talked about mercy and stuff. And I'm going to tell you, it's by God's regenerating grace that, that gives us that desire to 
emerge from this sinful life, and we want this new desire to come in us. And, you know, when you become <coughs> saved, when you turn your back on sin to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's something that happens. There's a desire to commune with God that begins to develop. There is a desire to, to follow after Him, to live for Him, to do, the, to do the right things, to spend time with Him, to learn about Him in the Bible. We begin to feel this pull toward God when you get saved that you never had before. It's, 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 it's amazing. In Isaiah 26, verse 9, it says, my soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. Man, when's the last time you said that to God? When your judgments come up on the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Man, Lord, my, my soul yearns for you. Yes. Lord, this morning, my spirit longs for you. That you woke up this morning and knowing that it was Sunday morning and you're getting to go to the house of the Lord and join with others in worship and prayer and praise and hear the word of God. Man, did you just have a longing? Is it, is it like when you're so anticipating something the clock won't move fast enough to get to that time? Is that, is that your mindset? Or is it, man, if I can just hit that snooze button one more time. If I can just sleep a little longer. You see, when we get saved and we get this, this love for God and, and the presence of God, these new longings and desires and anticipations, we express those through to Him in our prayers. In Romans 8, 15, it says, The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him, <coughs> we cry out the Father. We cry out to Him. We experience a new delight. Man, with that new relationship, we experience a new delight in gathering with God's people in church on Sundays. There's a new delight to live in obedience to God's will and all of His honor and all of His glory. It is a delight to live for the Lord. It is a delight to, to serve Him. It is, it is in this passion that we find joy. Now Psalms 1, it's not on your scriptures here, but Psalms 119.1 says, Happy are those who live pure lives. Happy are those that live pure lives who, who follow the Lord's teaching. I'm telling you that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. When, when you're in this, this great big God, and we've been talking about how amazing and how powerful He is in this relationship with Him. Man, God, the love... For God is seen more in our desires than it is in our Christian acts, in the Christian things that we do. And, and the reason I say that is because in the outward act of religion and actions, you see them in church all the time, they can be faked. But your deepest desires are true and God sees those. He sees those. It's, it, it, what you do is one How many times do you see somebody... I remember different revival services and stuff, and you'll see somebody dancing in the spirit, you'll see somebody, oh, they're just in the flash. They're just doing that for show. They're just, you know. And we're judging by that. And yet, maybe setting down someone who that doesn't have the, the freedom to get up, and everybody else is charismatic, and they're sitting there, and they're quiet, but inside their heart is crying out to God. Inside, they wish they were free. Lord, I wish I could just wrap my arms around your feet and just grab hold and just cry and do love on you and, 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 and to the flesh they're sitting there. But their deepest desire God sees and I believe it brings more love and more warmth and more joy to Him than the people that are perhaps are free. I'm not saying they're not all genuine but you know what I'm saying? I'm saying it's that deep desire that makes a difference. And let me just tell you I know that you may not be everything you want to be as a Christian but the fact that you have a deeper desire to be more, and I don't mean just a wish, inside you wish you were more. I wish I was a better prayer warrior. I wish I was a person more of compassion. I wish that, Lord, I, I knew the word more. And you had this, this, this birth of desire and you can't taste me. Don't discount that. I'm not saying just be satisfied with just keeping it in your thoughts. I'm not talking about just a thought. There's a difference between a thought. Listen, I have a thought that I'd like to be thin. I even have a desire to be thin, but not deep enough desire to give you credit for it because it doesn't happen. It's, I'm not willing to, to turn my back on the Fritos or whatever. I'm just thinking of the last thing I was munching on at my, at my chair. And it's usually the easiest thing to grab, you know. So 
there's this desire that begins to take place. But what fundamentally changes in our relationship with God is that we no longer live for ourselves. That this gratification of our sinful desires and things no longer matter. That our hearts are driven to, to God and to worship God. And let me just tell you, because I, I want you to get all the fullness of this, that when you get saved and you get these new desires, it doesn't mean that, that everything else has went away. There is a competition now. Our old sinful desires don't forfeit and just move on. There is a war that this Christianity, this walk with Christ introduces you to a, a complex relationship that now you've got the, the, the desires of the flesh waging war against the desires of the spirit. It, it happens. Our faith introduces us to a conflict. It's a conflict of passion. Look at Galatians 5.17. It says, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So you are not to, you are not to do whatever you want. So getting saved doesn't mean our flesh dies. It doesn't mean that it all takes place. It means that when, when you surrender your life to the Lord, things begin to happen that way. You begin to get spiritually stronger. And those desires, I'll tell you, a lot of the desires I had before I got saved, I don't have any of those, a lot of those desires at all anymore. That doesn't mean when I got saved, they went away. It meant as I grew and matured and got stronger and stronger, that I, I fell more in love with God and the things of God and I desired more things of God and the things of the world didn't appeal to me as much. They're so temporal. They're so just temporary type of things. And then when you get saved and you get in this full pursuit of God, this full pursuit, this is the desire to please God, the desire to be with God, to spend time in His presence, that's why Psalm 1611 is true. Let's look at that scripture again. Thou will show me the path of life, and in thy presence is fullness of joy, and at their right hand there are pleasures forever, forevermore. It is where we find happiness and joy. I can't, I'm not going to tell you that you don't find happiness. You don't get happy about other things. Jen got a new car. Yay. She's happy about that car. But that can't be her source of happiness. It's okay to be happy about the car. God blessed him with the car. What looked like a week ago was going to be a terrible point. They went from looking to be carless <laughs> and no money to get a car to today... Two cars. I mean, that's that's the reason you get happy because you can see the favor of the Lord, the protection of God and stuff. And so, yes, financial things and, and things happen that, that, that you get blessed, but it's because of your, your faith in God and why those things make the bigger difference. It's not where you find your happiness. If you're not happy today, if you're battling sadness and you're battling uneasiness, if you're just not satisfied, you need to check your desires. If the desires for the flesh and the material and the physical are a never-ending battle that you cannot ever get enough of, and that's the way it is, you will never be satisfied with more money, more physical things, material things, financial things. You will never have to look across all of Hollywood and look at the suicides and look at the divorces and look at the miserable people that just to how unhappy that they are. You can never get satisfied in the physical. But can I tell you something? Your desire for God, that desire to have a, a, a satisfying and a fulfilling relationship with God, a deeper walk with God, it doesn't mean that you're ever going to get to a place you wish you weren't even closer to God. But can I tell you something? You, you're satisfied. You're fulfilled in this walk with God, even though I want more, I don't ever have that void. I don't have that thing I'm searching for because the time of reading the Bible, the time of being in church, the time of praise and worship, man, it's so fulfilling. Living my daily life and, and our, um, are we illuminate? We're illuminate team, yes. Our illuminate team, we're challenged. I'll tell you what we're challenged to do. Uh, by this Wednesday, they, they all have homework that they are to go to two places, one per a week, so it's two, since we didn't meet last week. Two places that you normally would not go, strictly 
to go find someone to encourage, pray with, and share Jesus with. That means they're to go to a funeral. You know, I'm not go there. I guess you could. There's people needing encouragement. Go to a nursing home. Go to an ER. Go to, I tell them, man, go to a dentist office. Go find somebody in the waiting room. I don't know. But there's this desire to share the love of God with people. And so, rather than just do status quo, we're, we're, we're challenging. Me too. i got to find two places. that we were, we're going to talk about it Wednesday night. We're, we're sharpening one another. We're challenging one another. I told Will yesterday, I said, I hadn't done my two places yet. He said, oh, that makes me feel good. That says he hasn't done his places. So I got it. But there's this desire to live for God. And when you have this desire and this hunger, there is a fulfilling that takes place. Yes. Let me just ask you, this non-religious... Think of something that you desire to do. It can be a hobby, an activity, something. It may be that you desire to cook, you desire to work in the garden, you desire to play golf, you, 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 desire, you desire to do some type of yarn work or thread work. Will likes to do embroidery or something, I don't know. He likes that stuff. If it's feminine, it's Will. Uh, but he's good at it. He's good at it. But think of something right now. Think of something... Jen likes to train dogs. I mean, so think of something. What do you have a desire? Don't just bypass this question right now. Uh, this is important to the sermon. Think of something you like to do. It could be fishing. You have it? Who has it? Raise your hand. Okay. Have what you like to do. You have your desire you like to do. Now, okay, so the rest of you don't like to do anything. Is that correct? <laughs> I wasn't going to call on you. <coughs> I'm more apt to call on you if you don't raise your hand, just so you know. So, put that in your mind. What is it, even if you didn't raise your hand, what is it you like to do? Now, do you, do you struggle to enjoy doing it? So, Jeff likes to golf. If he has a bad hit, yes, he doesn't enjoy that one. But golf in general, he doesn't struggle to enjoy golf. Will does not struggle to enjoy the multiple things he likes to do. <laughs> Jen doesn't struggle to enjoy the things. You don't write the things you like to do. You don't struggle to enjoy them. Do you look forward to getting to do them? Now let me ask you this question. Do you feel the same way about your desires for God? Do you feel the same way about when you know that you've got time set aside, you're going to get to sit down and you're going to get to read the Word of God? Is there, do you look at the clock, do you get excited? Do you plan for it? Because sometimes to do your events, you have to make time and plan your schedule to get there and be a part of that. <coughs> do you take that much interest in the things for God? For those desires? The question we asked originally is, when will you be happy? And I'm telling you, just like it is when you have a loved one that passes, you loved them and you know that you loved them, but then you look back and you realize, wow, I took them for granted. I took that time for granted. I didn't spend that time with them. I didn't, I didn't make the most of it. I think some of you in your relationship with, and you know what, let's be honest, I think with all of you, even myself, there, there's more time and more special attention that we could give in our walk, in our relationship with God. And if it is a challenge and a burden and a struggle to spend time with God, you really need to start talking to God about that. I don't have a thing to turn on the light switch, but it, it should... It should strike a chord with you. It should, it should waken you up just a little bit. Because see, if you just read the Word of God to hear the words, if you just read the Word of God because you, you think it just tells you all things you can't do, but when you read the, God, the Word of God and realize that it's a living Word of God that's active and it's proactive and it's promises and it's strength and it's to you, and those promises are real. And that peace that it promises is real. And that direction and instructions and the wisdom is real. 
and you begin to read the Word of God as though it really is just God speaking to you, guiding you, directing you, loving your life that much, it changes things. It becomes much more enjoyable. You could come to me and tell me about something you did for someone, and you could come to me and say, Pastor, here's what I want to do for you. I'm probably going to have more interest in what you're going to do for me. I don't I know snow your nose at that. I mean, it's just the way life is. You know that. Read that word. Not as says something what God did for Smith. What does God say for you? He's going to help you to be that strength, to be that light, to make a difference for the kingdom of God. Prepare you to stand before him one day and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Man, you did awesome. You read my word. I, I know that I'm just excited about spending time with you as you are with me. And you made your life count. And can I tell you that in that relationship, this great big God, and that's the reason I've been talking about great big God all this time, I want you to realize that there's a reason for happiness and to be happy. And in the fullness, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy in your Jimmy's darkest hour that he's in right now. Doesn't matter why he's there. God cares about his future. He's a God of grace and a God of mercy. And he's bigger than our mistakes, and he's bigger than our past, and he's bigger than any roadblock the enemy sets up against you. If the doctor's giving you some diagnosis, God is bigger than a diagnosis. If you got marriage issues, me and B had terrible marriage issues when we got married. I wasn't saved. I wasn't a good husband. Nobody ever would have dreamed that God would have took that guy and made him into such an amazing, incredible husband. <laughs> but miracles, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. I'm not going to make it difficult on you. I'm not going to have you come up here and say, man, I really don't like spending time with God or I don't hunger for it. But I do want you right now between you and God. Do you look forward to coming to church? Do you look forward to worship? Do you look forward to reading the Bible? Do you look forward to spending time in prayer? And I don't mean just to, do you not mind it. I mean, do you look forward to it? Is that a deep desire that you have. I'm not saying that you do it all the time. I'm saying is it a desire that you have. Do you have a deep desire to be more that way? Then let God know that. If you don't desire, then let God know that as well. Because it, 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 it matters. It makes a difference. So Father, right now, Lord, across... I, I know that, Lord, everybody, we desire to do more. We desire... I, I say we do. I know I do. Lord, I desire to... Be much stronger in prayer and stronger in faith, Lord. I desire to, to know the Word of God and, and memorize the Word of God and hide the Word of God in my heart. Lord, I desire that. I desire to say no to flesh more than I do now, God. I desire to be more... That is a desire that I have. I long to be in church and to be in praise and worship. Lord, I love to raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I love that. I get to come and, and exalt Lord, the, the winning team. I get to come and, Lord, just praise you, glorify you. But, Lord, I pray for every heart right now. God, I pray that you would examine every desire, every heart. Lord, perhaps some, they, they don't feel that desire. God, they don't know what's wrong with it. They, they, at least right now, they have a desire to have a desire. And that's a start. God, I pray for just the love of God inside them, the love they would have for you to begin to well up. Lord, I pray that as they begin to read the Word of God, that they wouldn't just read it as i got to read so many chapters today, but I, that, Lord, they would begin to look, God, I want to read your Word and see what you have to say to me. And, God, what is it I can hide in my heart that I can share and say to others that you want me to share with them? Lord, I pray right now for a strengthening and a renewing of relationship. God, that you would be the source of our joy and our happiness regardless of situations. Lord, whether we have a little, we have a lot. Lord, our happiness and joy, God, is in our relationship with you. So, Lord, just like when we lose someone, we regret sometimes that we didn't invest more time or we kind of have an awakening. Lord, I pray today that there would be an awakening. That, Lord, we would just want to cling tighter to you than we ever have before. And God, use us. And, Lord, those people that are not on our, Lord, our Illuminate team, Lord, Lord, I just pray that every individual here would be challenged this week and the rest of their life to share the hope, the love, the message of Jesus with those they come in contact with. Because what our group of four or five can do, Lord, we as a group of 40, we can do so much more. 
And we just pray, Lord, that the joy and the happiness of the Lord would be complete in our lives, God, and that you would be our reason for living. Thank you.